Do you want to play one of the easiest golf irons on the market to hit, like for miss hits and those ideas? Do you struggle with iron play? Duffing, fatting, thinning, yet you quite enjoy maybe your hybrids, or you struggle with how you interact with the ground. The irons we're looking at today could change everything for you. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Cleveland Halo XL irons. I'm going to show you what they can do, what they look like, how they might actually change your perception of what an iron could be in your bag. If you like the video, hit that like button down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these irons as well. Also in the description down below, you'll see lots of affiliate links. If you any of those products, you want to get the best price for those products. Use those links down there to not miss out on some crazy good deals. It's cold, but I took them out onto the course and let's take a look at how these irons looked and how they felt. So they look big. I mean, they do redefine what irons are. Like the five iron is basically a very big hybrid. It's a big hybrid. It's like iron here, but then drops off with this big bit at the back and it's a big size hybrid. So I don't know what to call the five iron hybrid -y thing. Like it, it just totally, it more than crosses over. Where the wedge looks like a wedge. I mean, it looks like a big headed wedge from here. We still get sole, we still get this drop back this way, but you don't see any of it from the top. You're basically just looking at this top line from the top. And the eight iron is in between. You see a little bit of the back of the head out of the heel side and it disappears into the toe, which is quite unique. You see like this little bit here and then it kind of sways away into the toe from your gaming position, which makes me feel for most people, most of the irons are gonna feel just like big headed irons. It's not until you get up near seven, six and five that then they do start really screaming, help, help, help. But the truth of the matter is, is that most average golfers are not screaming help, help, help in those irons and they should be. I'm not wearing sunglasses, these are transitions. <laughs> it is winter, the ground is frozen and I know I am cool. I can't help it, I just can't help it. In every cycle that these came come around, I asked the same question to myself and to you, the audience, like why more people aren't just gaming these? It makes it very clear that we're buying a lot of our equipment, I think, on ego and looks. And I mean, even to the point where I talk about looks because performance for most clubs are so similar nowadays, like they are all matching out. But then when it comes to these, I think because they're so extreme, this is where possibly you could see a needle shift yet people are reluctant to shift the needle because they're hanging on to a day gone by almost with their clubs. It's really, these are, they pose a very interesting human question, which is, do you want to look a certain way or do you want to perform a certain way? And it should be for most of you perform. Like they just feel solid. I have gamed these clubs. I've gamed these clubs in a six iron, took my normal six iron out and game these. And I'll be honest with you, like it just felt so, easy and I could easily do it again. We better come back a bit for the five iron because the five iron is gonna bomb. Like the five iron's remarkable because it just is the fattest iron you're ever gonna play. Making it just so easy to launch. <laughs> like it is, it, you hit them and it's like, oh my word, that's so easy. And regardless how we define easy or not, it feels, definitely feels easy. I think it could be challenged how easy it is, but I do think more people are gonna get launches that they should and deserve with these. I'm battling with a five iron in a regular set. My longest iron is a six iron, and I've got some speed and hit it okay. Let's go forward for the wedge, I think. Because nine iron and wedge are basically just blending, like with your set, they're totally just, kind of blending in. Like looks wise, this could blend with a gaming wedge, you know, like a one of their players wedges. Yet you still have that same feeling of pop up in the air. Like they have a hollow body-ish kind of sound, but they're not too crazy to be fair. Like they are feeling a little bit more iron, like maybe the iron's gone by or the version's gone by. But what I do like is that you do feel like you could do anything you do with normal lines with these and a bit more. Maybe we should challenge that in the game at the end. 
Well, the Halo XLs have more mass away from the face, trying to increase MOI, so pushing it much more towards the ideas of hybrids and woods, helping you keep the ball speed up on miss hits. The full face features a striking area that's 20% larger than the last generation, so if you want a face that is big, as well as supported with weight off it, heel and toe balance, this is going to do it. Featuring Hydra Zip Blast on the face, so they're using their face technology basically from their wedges and irons to bring them into the halos to allow you to try and keep consistency of spin performance and we will test this in the game at the end. Two white grooves on the bottom to help with alignments, you've got the alignment rails on the bottom as well to help it sit on the ground to help you point that club in the direction you want it to go. They're definitely aimed at golfers who are looking for as much help as possible but they do as always offer the question, they kind of pose the question, are we just getting irons wrong? Like we're we just buying into our egos rather than looking purely at performance because obviously the striking part of the tech is the look of these as I've said earlier you're not buying these irons thinking I've got the best looking irons in the world you would be buying these for functionality alone and in theory I mean that's the only reason we should buy any club isn't it and the short irons in this set feature the V-groove that we've seen from Srixon and Cleveland before. I've got them in my Srixon irons, which definitely helps with the idea of turf interaction and manipulating that club on the more lofted irons where you will play maybe a variety of different shots with those clubs. As well as we see in all the Cleveland products, we have the Action Mass CB, so counterbalancing at the other end, trying to help again with stabilities and feels and control of that face, making for an all-round... As friendly an iron, if we're still calling it an iron, as you could possibly get. The eight iron's carrying an average of around 182, yes, 182 yards. It spins around 5,300 revs, so it's a very low spinning and launching around 20 degrees, 19.7 average, I think it was. So. It's a high launch, low spinning power bat, like they're powerful irons through their launch characteristics. Let's see what we get out of five. So the five iron spins around 3,300 revs. It's averaging carry 290 yards. <laughs> Bomb ball. Again, it's the same ideas. Launching around the 14 degree mark. So they're healthy launch, they're low spin as you'd expect, and they're very healthy distance. The only other thing to add is they do feel a little bit drawery, which I think for lots of people is a good thing if you're struggling with shots off to the right. But it is something I would want you to bear in mind with these, that you might find that they are a little drawery, which might overdraw some people. I feel like I can manage it. It's tiny, but it is there. So if we're looking at a seven piece set, so seven irons, you're looking at around $900, an equivalent UK pricing. Making these irons, very good value for money in the present world of irons. There are considerably more expensive options out there. These are priced much more with the idea of trying to get people, encourage them to get as much help as possible, but around a price that is more affordable. Now, what's affordable obviously is relative and we could debate that forever, but in the realms of where they sit compared to other clubs, they're definitely competitively priced. So let's be real with the game. What can I do with these clubs on the course that I might or can't do with them, I should say, that I might be able to do with a regular set of irons? Let's do a series of challenging, difficult gaming shots, almost quite extreme. Can I push the extreme club to hit extreme shots when they're built maybe just to flop up in the air and be easy to hit? That's often the thing, isn't it? More gameable in a blade to these, you're just, they're too easy, blah, 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 blah. Let's test it, or let's test me. <laughs> 40 yard cut with the five iron. So I'm not really going under, I'm gonna try and go round. Big curvature. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yes, please, yes, please. The only slight point with this is when you open the face up like I did, you expose more of that bounce. So on a tight lie, trying to do that, you do have to feel like you're really getting that heel in. So as an extreme, that's where that sole might be a negative. This is frozen ground and I cut that 55 yards, like overcut it, easy. Sling hook around this tree. So the green round here, it's again about 40, 50 yard kind of hook. So with the eight iron, I'm not gonna try and go low because it's gonna go under them. Uh, there's no roots here, is there? <laughs> mm. 
Okay, 40 yard hook. Like this feels like it's gonna be easy with this club, to be fair. Oh yeah, look at that go. I mean, that's just no different than any, that's really slung. In fact, it kind of feels easier because of how much you've got down by the ball. What about a punch shot? So as I'm nearly six foot, so what's that? Nine, 10 foot trying to go under that. Obviously people think that these just pop up in the air, like can you punch it? And people don't question that really, they do. You know, they accept they go up. So I'm gonna do it with a five and an eight iron because the five iron feels like easy to do. This is, I've, I'm like what, 160 out. So just putting a five iron back and just punching that forwards. I mean, I've overdone it, that's too low. Like that's crazy too low and a little left. So easy, like extreme. I, could, I mean, that was going this high. So the five iron, no problem knocking that down. I mean, it is just loft. This doesn't really engage if you like on every shot. And if it does, it's only a tiny amount. It's enough to make a difference maybe over time, but you can still override it. So an eight iron, which I would never use in this situation, I'd use like a six really, or that five, and I wouldn't try and knock it down. So this needs knocking down. And you can see that, look, that's an eight iron popping under that very low hanging tree. You can do anything with these, as long as you can do stuff with clubs. What you can do with these as well is pop them up a little bit more in the air, which is where I think the majority of golfers will win with a club like this. You've just got to let go of that ego, which is so hard for golfers. I really like them. What do you think? Is it something you would try? If you want to find out how to hit your irons better, this video's got all the answers. It doesn't matter what your iron you use, just improves your skill.